Welcome to part two of our journey to Antarctica, our days at sea. This is Kenny and JJ go all the way to the Drake Passage. So if you remember in part one, we left off when we boarded the Seaborne Pursuit in Ushuaia, and then we headed out to sea. To get to the Drake Passage, we first had to go through the Beagle Channel, which was not friendly in itself. We would then spend the next day and a half crossing the Drake Passage to get to Antarctica. And then don't forget, we also have to cross it to go all the way back. This video will include our sea days to Antarctica and on the way back. So how did the Drake Passage treat us? Well, on a scale of one Drake Lake to 10 Drake Shake, on the way down we had a three. Not too bad, right? I still got sick. And then on the way back, we actually had a five. Considering how rough the seas were on the way back, I can't imagine what it would be as a 10, and I don't think I want to experience it. We thought that being at sea was going to be quiet and we'd get bored, but actually, there was a huge itinerary every day we were at sea with lots of things to do. We were never bored, and any downtime we did have, we played around. So, just like this with Kenny and JJ's rockin' cribs. In case you missed it, we already did a full tour of our suite and you can find the link down below so you can go to that and see what we thought of the suite and if it was worth the price. So as I speed tour through our room, I'm going to instead talk about the reason why we chose this particular ship. First of all, when selecting a ship to go to Antarctica, size does matter. Per the Antarctic Treaty, only ships with less than 500 passengers are allowed to go to shore. That means ships that are over 500 passengers can sail around the continent, but the passengers cannot get off the ship. Next, only 100 passengers from a ship can go on shore at one time. So if you wanna have more shore time, it's important to look for a smaller ship. After doing a lot of research, we thought we found the Goldilocks of ships with the Seaborne Pursuit because it carries only 264 passengers yet it's big enough to have built-in stabilization, taking out 80% of the wave impact. Not to mention that the ship just looked beautiful, and if we were gonna be on a ship for 11 days straight, we definitely wanted to be comfortable. The whole reason that we selected this particular room was for the jacuzzi. The two signature suites on the Seaborne Pursuit are the only two suites that offer a private jacuzzi on the balcony. So the other thing to do on your sea days is to test out your new gear. How's it feel? It's good. Um, I, well, I will be very warm in this, I'm sure. So, it'll you're, be good for Antarctica. <laughs> you're warm in everything. <laughs> <laughs> and after exploring your room, of course you gotta explore the entire ship. By the time we actually boarded the ship, we were already about five days into our trip. So we had a lot of laundry to do already because we tried to pack light. And one of the things that I've come to love about expedition cruises is that usually there is guest laundry that is free. And so there's just washers and dryers and even the detergent and everything you can need is already provided. You just have to make sure you grab a machine because they will fill up. Throughout the ship, there are multiple lounges and you don't have to worry about pesky drink packages because everything is included with the exception of top shelf liquor and premium wines. The lounges also offer snacks throughout the day, and in the Constellation Lounge, they even had high tea every day. Now, we only experienced this one time, and that's one thing that I wish I would have done more of. One thing I was pleasantly surprised by is that the ship had a wide age range. There were some high school kids and college kids, and it went all the way up to senior adults. And no matter what the age range, the Seaborn Square was the place to hang out. We found all ages out here, usually playing board games or putting together puzzles, and it was just a nice, fun, filling atmosphere. Oh, and this is where you get your coffee. The Expedition Lounge was another great place to get a drink and just kind of hang out and wait for either a lecture to start or after some of the entertainment to come hang out and mingle with the other guests. The Bow Lounge was probably one of my favorite spots. It's at the front of the ship, overlooking the bow, as you could probably get from the name. And it's got all these screens, so you can see where you are, you can see how fast we're going, what the waves are doing, um, and any ships that are coming by. 
so it was just really fun to see. And not only that, but there were also snacks and coffee available at certain times of the day. And I have to mention the beautiful atrium that opened up and let light into the ship. And we were here over Christmas, so there was this huge Christmas tree, and it was just beautiful. Next up is the Discovery Center. Besides our room, this is where we spent majority of our time. This is where we would have briefings to understand what the weather was going to be like, our safety briefings for Antarctica, lectures, and entertainment. And what else do you do at sea but eat? This was the first ship we've ever been on that had a full sushi bar. And so we actually ate there quite a few nights because some nights we just didn't feel like having a big meal at the restaurant. So we would come up here and instead order all the sushi and drink beer and wine and just have a great evening. And the one thing we did learn is don't be scared to order. You can order as much as you want, as many times as you want, and eat as much as you like. And like all the other food on the ship, the sushi was really good. Hence why we went there to eat multiple times. So don't judge me, but I completely forgot to get any video of the actual restaurant. Instead, I focused all my videoing on all of the wine. Now some of this wine was actually included that you could just order, and then others were for a premium price that you would have to actually pay separately. And apparently this is the only picture of food from the restaurant that I got. But I did get this picture of John who actually fell in love with the breadsticks. And here's a sample menu of what you can expect in the restaurant. You have one side that changes every night, kind of like nightly specials, and on the right side is what's available every night. Being that this is an expedition cruise, you do not have to dress up for dinner. The attire says that it's elegant casual. I don't know what that means, but everybody was in from either jeans all the way to suits. So don't be intimidated if you don't bring a nice outfit for dinner. And if you're seasick or you just don't feel like going out, you can always order room service. Room service is available 24 hours and it has its own menu. However, if you saw something you liked on one of the other menus, you could order it too. Another dining option is the colonnade. And while I didn't get a picture of any of the food here either, I did get this video showing the outside and how bad the waves were. The colonnade offers buffet style breakfast and lunch, and then there's a sit down dinner. After eating all of that food, you're probably going to want to walk around and explore the ship some more. First stop, the gym. It was a nice sized gym, however I will have to say it was really hard working out on the Drake Passage. And you also have a scheduled time to go visit the sub shop. And this is a really cool experience because only Seaborn and Viking are the only ones that have submarines and allow passengers to do submarine dives for an additional cost. Every day the bridge was opened at scheduled times so you could go up and see what was going on and just chat with some of the crew and learn some different things about Antarctica and traveling to Antarctica and their experiences. And if you were anything like me, this might be part of your at sea experience as well. Being seasick, laying in the bed, watching the door rock back and forth while this is going on outside your window. Before you know it, you'll be looking at Antarctica for the first time and your days at sea will be a distant memory as you go exploring a whole new continent. Join us next time as we set foot on Antarctica.